Hey guys, it's Tamara from Southern Adornments Decor. How are you? I hope you're having a good day. I am back live with you guys for the third, which hand? <laughs> I'm a little cookie today. The third day of the 30 day Facebook live challenge. Um, so in case you didn't know, we are doing 30 days straight of Facebook lives. I have not done this in four years. So I'm super excited about it. I'm excited to connect and get to know you guys more and to show up more for you guys. So hopefully you enjoy this. So on day one, we cut out this lovely uh, door hanger. And then on day two, which was yesterday, we painted it here live. And then today for day three, I'm going to show you how to add the monogram to the middle. And so this part, um, you could apply what I'm going to show you to any door hanger that you paint. Hello, Jackie and Doris and Betsy. Hello, hello. How is everybody doing? Where, what, are you, what are you up to today? Hey, Debbie from Paris, Arkansas. I am located in Kentucky. Hello, Pamela and Cindy. So last night in the Painters Clubhouse, I went live and I decided to show them how to choose your font, choose your paint colors and figure out the size and everything of the monogram and how to like print this out on the computer. Uh, we did it all in Canva. I showed them how to like upload a photo of their painted door hanger into Canva and then to like choose the font by laying it on top and kind of, you know, like seeing the different options that you have. You can even play with the colors on there to decide what color you want to paint it. It's a lot of fun. Um, hey, Lisa, excited to see more lately. Thank you. Hello, Doris, doing good in San Diego. It is so hot here in Kentucky. I don't know how hot it is in, in, in uh, California, but it's in the 90s here this week. It is miserably hot. Oh, Roxanne, homemade pasta sounds delicious. Pasta's my favorite. Sitting at the beach. Oh, that sounds wonderful, Rita. Hey, Joy. Hi, Jerry. So, um, we even chose the colors that we're going to be painting this tonight, or today, not tonight today, and uh, it's not your traditional black. We chose to use two of the colors that are in the flower, and we decided this based on how it looked in Canva. So we tried teal, we tried navy and black, and we like changed the color of the font four or five different times, and then we took a vote. And it was very close between teal with a gray drop shadow and coral with a light pink drop shadow. So, coral it is. Um, now let me show you a little trick because I was getting ready to lay my graphite paper on here. By the way, you can find graphite paper at Michael's or any other craft store. Hey, Selena, Paducah is only about 35 minutes away from me. I'm halfway between Murray and Benton, uh, Kentucky. Oh, Karen, I cleaned Charlie's room last week. I spent about two and a half hours in there and thank goodness so far she's kept it clean. So we'll see, we'll see how long that lasts. Um, Deb, I'm glad to hear you're recovering. But before I lay my graphite paper on here, it's always smart to get out a little piece of painter's tape because we're gonna use the painter's tape to, to place our monogram on the piece. So let's decide where to put it. I made this monogram a little smaller because since we're using the coral color for the lettering, I didn't want the letter to overlap the flower if at all possible. So I'm gonna try to position it as close to center as I can but also not on the flower. And also try to get it straight up and down. So I think that looks pretty good. So now I'm gonna put my little piece of painter's tape right across the top, like so. So that creates a hinge. I can't even, can't even pick up the paper. That creates a hinge so we can lift this up and we can put our graphite paper underneath. Um, <laughs> bathroom renovations, that sounds like a mess. You hear my country accent coming out mess. <laughs> hey, Kimberly. Welcome. Hey, Patty from Waterford, California. Um, by the way, if you guys did not get the text letting you know I was going live, I forgot to put that. Let me pull up my, so I can also type on the thing for you guys. Hold on. Doo -doo -doo. I got to log in here. Um, if you can get the text letting you know that I was going live for this today, you can get text notifications when we go live um, by texting me. And somebody messaged me the other day and said, is it really you who answers these? So I sent a little video back to her. I was like, hello. Yes, it really is me. <laughs> it was funny. So you can text 270. This time I'm going to type in the right number. For those of you watching, you know that I did this one time and um, I typed in the wrong 
wrong notifications. I had to think how to spell it. I typed in the wrong email address or wrong. I can't even talk today. Wrong text number. Ay, yeah, yeah. So somebody's wanting to know what's happening the 23rd. Well, um, hang on a second. I'm trying to do like three things at one time and my brain can't handle all of them. Okay. I think I got it. I was going to pin it too. There we go. There we go. All right. Now we're ready. Um, so August 23rd is when my membership, the Painters Clubhouse, opens back up. Um, we have had it for three years now. It is a membership where we teach you door hanger painting. Um, oh, also, what I'm doing right now is getting a ballpoint pen, and we're just going to trace around the outside of the letter. So I printed my letter out in gray so that I could easily see where my pencil pen lines go. But anyways, Painters Clubhouse is a membership for people who are wanting to improve their door hanger painting skills, who are wanting to become more confident in their painting skills. We have everybody in there from beginner on up to people who have been doing this for quite a while that um, are you know interested in learning new techniques. Some people love it just simply for the community. So. Somebody said you can't see the work I'm doing. I am so sorry about that. Here, let me pull it down a little bit. Okay, so now that I have traced on top of the word, before I peel the painter's tape up, lift it up like a hinge and move your graphite paper and make sure that you got all of it. And I did. So we're gonna take it off now. And since we used painter's tape, it didn't peel anything up. Um, if you're having a hard time seeing what I'm doing, you may wanna swipe to the right and that will um, make the comments like disappear so that you can easily see, okay? All right, so the colors we're gonna use are called Coral Blush. It's a Deco Art Americana color and Cotton Candy. So this is the color of the letter, the darker color, and then we're gonna do a drop shadow in the lighter color. Can you show us how to cut this out as a 3D letter? I could on the Glowforge, yes. Um, if you're gonna cut it out by hand, I would recommend using a scroll saw. A jigsaw, this, this type of letter, especially one scripty like this, is gonna be very flimsy and you'll break it with a jigsaw. So use a scroll saw. Um, let me see if I missed another question. What's the date for the August double-sided door, <laughs> door hanger thing before? Okay, Lauren is asking about our fall workshop that we're doing. That begins on the sign up for it begins on August 2nd and then it actually begins the workshop starts August 16th so come sign up on August the 2nd for that okay let's go ahead and get our coral blush color and we're just going to start painting inside the letter by the way if any of you have any more questions about painters clubhouse you're interested in that and maybe you just want to know more I did put a link up in the video description for you and you can click over there and you can read more about it now, right now, I'm using a filbert tip brush. This is a size 7. It's great because you get nice, smooth edges on the ends of your letters, like right up here. If I want it to be nice and smooth, I can use this filbert tip brush, and I will get... I won't have any of those odd little bristle marks. Another little trick is to when you are pulling your brush down, uh, when you get to the bottom of the letter, lift straight up. Before you you know, you're pushing down with the brush to smooth the paint out. And before you like, don't flip it or feather it off the end or flick it, however you want to say that, just lift straight up and it will, um, it'll make a smooth end. Terry says, I'm going to join. Awesome, Terry. You're going to love it. We have so many women in there who thought they could never really paint before and they joined and they have been blown away by not only the fact that they can paint, but that people are wanting to buy the things that they are painting. So, so many of these ladies have actually um, gone on to start their own businesses and are selling at craft fairs. Some are even teaching paint parties. You don't have to go that far if you're not, you know, don't let it scare you. You don't have to do any of that. But if you want to, we are here to support you. So, we're just painting inside the letter right now. It might take a couple of coats to get it really smooth enough. And if you wanna see the video where I painted this door hanger, we did that live yesterday. So just go back and watch that one. 
All of these videos are also available on YouTube. So if you ever have a hard time finding them on Facebook, um, our YouTube channel is like a library full of videos. So if you have a day where you just want to binge watch a bunch of them, you can go in there and just do that. Super easy. All right, I'm going to dry this and then we're going to do a second coat. Donna says, I'm a little late. Did she use a stencil for the letter? So I used a piece of paper with the letter printed on it and some graphite paper to transfer the shape. And then all I'm doing now is painting inside the lines. So the letter was drawn on here and now I'm just painting it in. Hey, Carrie, welcome. Um, okay, Terry says, I'm so new with making and learning everything I can. I'm confused where to start. There are so many others doing this. Please help. I'm... <laughs> I'm also on a low income and have a little to start out. So one of the great things about painting door hangers is that even if your income is low and you can't really um, dive into this full steam ahead by buying, you know, a bunch of wood and all this stuff, a, um, you could start out by practicing on um, something that doesn't cost very much like cardboard or poster board or something like that until you improve your skills. And then once you feel confident enough, I would suggest one of two things. If if money allows, purchase a wooden blank or go to the dollar store even and buy some of their little wooden crafts and start practicing on wood. And then you can go out and if you're willing to learn how to use power tools, that is the most economical way to do this. You're gonna use a jigsaw, which you can get for about $40 at Lowe's. Um, and you're gonna use a jigsaw to cut out the wood pieces now you can get a sheet of Revolution plywood that's a quarter inch thick, four foot by eight foot sheet. Normally, I'm not gonna promise this, your, this price in your hometown, but in my hometown for $15. And I can usually get at least 10 door hangers out of that. So that would make your wood cutouts only $1.50 a piece. And so we have some free templates in our free library that you can try out. Now, if you're in the Painters Clubhouse, you get two templates every month. Plus, you have access to all of the old templates that we have put in there from April 2018 until now, two a month, every month for three years. So, um, if you want to join Painters Clubhouse, you get instant access to all of those. So, you're not going to have to buy any templates right off the bat. You're just going to have to pay for the membership, download the templates that are already in there, and just pick up some wood and some paint and get started. All right, we've got our, ba our base coat of our letter done. So now I'm gonna to switch to a round tip brush. Let's see. I've got some new ones. Let me get a new one because I always feel like I get the crappy ones out. And then I can't quite get them to, um, to do what I want. Where's the new ones? Here they are. Da, da, da. Well, okay, this one looks pretty good. Look, this one even looks like it's looks like it's got a unicorn horn or something for the stem. Where is the free library site? It's at southernadornmentsdecor.com. You go there and there's a button for it up at the very top. Um, let me look over here for questions. Do you go to the tips page and look at pictures? Yes, you can. You can, yeah. Um, so glad I joined last time the Painters Clubhouse was open. Any level of participation is accepted. Absolutely. Helen wants to know how I can get information for the paint colors for each of the demos. So Helen, uh, if you will text the word, the word list, L-I-S-T, to that phone number, every Friday we send out the new PDF with the paint colors listed on there and all the things you're going to need for the project that I paint on Tuesdays. So this was Tuesday's project. So right now if you text the word list to that phone number, you'll get um, on Friday when we release the new list, you'll get... The, the most updated one. Plus, I think in that link, you also have access to the previous uh, week's PDFs. Um, is, yes, Canva is free. Uh, and Amy, to clean my brushes, I just rinse them in warm water. Um, and the thing about not getting them gunked up, the trick to that is to not get your paint up close to the little, the ferrule. This is called the ferrule. Don't get the paint up close to the ferrule. Try to keep the paint on the lower half end of your bris bristles. So these are the bristles. I try not to go past here with the paint. 
because once the paint gets up in there, it's really difficult to get it out. And eventually it builds up and builds up and builds up until your brush is so stiff you can't really even clean uh, paint with it. Thank you, Lisa. Uh, Terry, this font is called Playlist Script. Um, Diane says, we, uh, you should all join the group. You will not be disappointed. Thank you for that. What size brush are you using? So I was using a Filbert Tip size seven. Now I'm switching to a round tip. I have no idea what number this one is because it doesn't have a number on it. It's just, it's just a pretty brush, but it doesn't have a ton of bristles as you can see. All right, I'm gonna smooth the bristles down a little bit and I'm gonna go after um, the, hang on, I need to water this paint down just a wee little bit. Just a couple drops of water. It's looking a little thick. It's been sitting in this little egg carton for a little while. Okay, we're using the color, we did use the color, color coral blush, but now we're using cotton candy. So swirl your paint around on that brush, and let me show you, see how it doesn't go all the way up to the ferrule? Keep it on the lower half of your bristles. Krista says, I've been silently watching for a while and I would love to join, but I don't know where to start. Krista, you don't have to worry about where to start. We take care of that part for you. So just whenever it's time, August 23rd, on August 23rd, um, sign up and then there will be a start here section. It will walk you through everything you need to know. It'll tell you like what supplies are recommended and stuff like that. You don't have to have every single supply we recommend to start out. Um, but we do have a recommended list of supplies and things like that. Angelica wants to know what the fall challenge is. We also call that the workshop, and that is going to be the week before August 23rd, which is the 16th. And we're going to be teaching you how to paint a double-sided fall door hanger. One side's got a pumpkin, the other side's got a turkey. We will begin sign-ups for that on August the 2nd, so next week. So if you stay tuned for that, also if you're on our text list, we'll notify you so you don't forget but that is a great way to get started as well. If you're kind of intimidated by this and you're scared to try it, joining us for the fall workshop will kind of boost your confidence because it's a handheld guided experience where we take you shopping with us. We um, take you through every step of the way for how to paint it. And I don't do it all in one video. It's broken down day by day. We do a little bit each day so that you feel like you, you know, what we do each day is doable. It doesn't feel intimidating or like too much in one session. So I definitely recommend that you come back and sign up for that when it's time. And also when you sign up for that, you'll have an opportunity to go ahead and sign up for Painters Clubhouse. If you know for sure you're, you know, already gonna do that, you'll have the opportunity. Okay, what I'm doing right now is adding a drop shadow to the word or to the letter. Notice I'm only putting the shadow on the right-handed side and underneath each stroke. So this stroke right here, I put it right here. And then this stroke right here, it's on the right-hand side and underneath. And then this stroke, it's gonna go right here down to this point. And this little round tip brush allows you to kind of get down there in that little crack and kind of put it precisely where you want. And then up here, I like to make it Hang on, I, can, I realize you can't see very well. Up here, I like to make it just a little thinner as it goes up. See how it kind of narrows? So it's not blunt, so it gets skinnier up toward the top. Can you buy blanks for the fall challenge? Yes, you will have the opportunity to purchase the wood blanks from us if you prefer. Um, they'll be on the supply list. Peg, I did not make these earrings. I actually got them from um, Oh, who was it? Anna's Inspired by You Jewelry. I got them from her website a few years ago. I don't even know if she carries these anymore. Okay, so now we also need to do it on the bottom side of this stroke right here, which is tricky because then it turns into this stroke and you gotta make sure you stop it right before it goes to curve and go down. So I'm gonna kinda put it right there and just peek peekaboo in that spot. And then on this side, when it starts to curve downward, I'm gonna to start to make it appear on this side. This one's a little harder because it's a script script piece, and so it makes it tricky to figure out where to put the drop shadow. So just kind of have a plan and just move slowly because if you go too fast, sometimes you'll end up putting it in a spot you didn't want it. Been there, done that. 
I will be happy to answer all y'all's questions in just a second. Let me finish this. Okay. I kind of feel like it probably also needs it right here. It Because stepping back and looking at it, it doesn't look right without it. So I'm going to go ahead and put that there. All right. Let me show you guys what it looks like. See the drop shadow? Notice how it kind of is skinnier up to whoops up toward this little area and then it goes fatter as you go down. I've got my camera mirrored so it's like when I put my hand here it's not where I was expecting my hand to appear on the screen. Um, how do you clean up where the carbon smeared? So there's these little things from the Dollar Tree. I don't even remember what they're called. They're like a something eraser. They're, they're really weird looking. They look like rubber and you can take these and just kind of gently rub and the graphite paper just disappears. It's not like a normal eraser. And I think I'm gonna use my scissors actually and trim that little dark spot off on the corner so it's clean. There might be a way to clean these. I really don't know how, what it is. But it's different than like a little pink eraser. It's, it's a different kind of material. So just use this and just kind of gently, you know, scrub anywhere where your graphite paper has transferred and it should come back clean. Phyllis calls it a fun eraser. Is that what they're really called? Um, okay, what other questions can I answer? I was looking to see if I missed any. Um, how much would you charge for the one you're painting now, Jenny says. Just wondering a price range. So this one is actually a little on the smaller side than most of the door hangers that I paint. So um, I would probably go $35 or $40 for this one. If it was a full size, like a 20 or 22 inch size, I would probably go more like $45 or $50. Um, but you have to come up with your own sort of pay scale and figure out like what it's worth to you for your time. Um, and what you're willing to charge. So when I first started out, I was only charging about $25 to $30 for most of my door hangers. And now I feel like I charge anywhere from $45 to $50 if I'm painting them myself. So, but you know, over time, those people are paying for all of my like knowledge and experience and stuff like that. And so I charge a little bit more. Um, how do you hang the door hangers? Amanda wants to know. We can go ahead and put a string on this one if you want to see how I do that. Let me grab some string and my staple gun and we will show you. So I get this uh, jute string stuff. You can find it at most craft stores, jute string. Just pull off a little bit of it, cut it, and then tie a knot in each end. How are you spelling Canva? Just like that, Cheryl, that's exactly how I spell it. Okay, so to, actually I'm gonna do a double knot because my single knot, like this jute string is a little cheaper and a little thinner than the kind I used to buy and I can't find my stash of the other stuff. So I'm kind of stuck to you. So just make sure you've got a knot that's thick enough that it's not gonna slip underneath the staple. Okay, make sure your letter's dry. Looks like it is. I'm gonna flip it over, make sure I've got the top Oh, and let me show you this little trick. So when you're trying to figure that out, hold your door hanger like this and figure out where it balances. So if I put my string right here and right here, right here, it's going to balance pretty well. If I put my string here and here, notice how the letter V starts to tilt. So I have to figure out where I can grab onto it that's going to be balanced. So right there. So I'm going to keep my fingers right there until I lay it down. And now I know to staple the string here and here. And now I've got a staple gun. This is a Stanley staple gun with quarter inch thick staples. And notice I've got this little piece of cardboard taped to the bottom. That's to make sure that the um, metal of the staple gun is not flat against the wood when I staple. That way the staple doesn't go all the way through. Somebody said also double knotted over the staple. That's a good idea also. But that makes sure that the staples don't go all the way through the door hanger. See how it's stapled on each side? And so now it's ready to hang. Actually, I would also spray seal or something on this. I'm gonna do a video another day sealing these. I'm gonna um, wait though, because it is so stinking hot outside. So I'll do that another day. Where can I get the cool paint brushes you're using and the sparkle ones you used last night? So the one I used today that looks like a little mermaid tail I got these at the Hobby Lobby a good long time ago. They, I'm not a mermaid tail. They look like a unicorn horn. I also have some that look like a mermaid tail. See, 
these. These are from Hobby Lobby. The glittered ones that I have, like this one and this one, <laughs> I've got paint all over that one, and this one right here that's painted like leopard print and got glitter. These are all from Murals and More by Jamie Connor. Um, and she sells them individually, but she also has a brush of the month club. I was looking for the other one that I have. Um, here it is. This is the newest one that I've got. It's I got the flamingo glitter. And so if you want to get one of these, you can save $2 per brush. I think if you type in the word Tamara, all caps and the number two, Tamara two. Um, let me see if I missed any more questions. Uh, la, la, la. What type of wood do you use for your cutouts? So um, the ones we ship from our shop, ship shop, is our uh, MDF material. The ones that I cut here on my Glowforge in my craft room are cut from quarter inch revolution plywood. Now you can find it at Lowe's. Um, if you can't find that kind, I would just look for some that is um, plywood underlayment. Paula said she received her August brush in the mail today. Awesome. Um, Lauren, we do the workshops about once a quarter. We had been doing them just fall and spring, but you guys love them so much. We're going to be doing them once a quarter. Um, Mary says, if you're already a Painters Clubhouse sister, do you have to sign up separately for the workshop? No, Mary. Painters Clubhouse members get into the workshop for free, so don't pay for it just yet. Wait until we give you a coupon code or something and instructions for how to get in because Clubhouse members get to do it for free. Um, if we join and aren't able to watch live during the day, is it recorded for later? Yes, it is. Um, can you buy blanks for the fall challenge? Yes, those will be available in the um, supply list. Where can I get those brushes? I think I answered that. Is the shadow on the letter or just beside it? It's just beside it, Diane. Oh, Cindy Wilson, that was so sweet. She said, if you're on the fence about joining Painters Clubhouse, just do it. You won't be disappointed. Full of f fun. PC sisters are the best. Love my PC family. I love you guys too. Is there a general rule to remember when doing shadowing? So, sort of. Um, so, when you're doing like a drop shadow on something, you just need to pick an area that's going to be where your light source is coming from. So, for this one, the light source is coming up here by the flower. And so, that's why the shadow is cast on the other side and the bottom side of the letter. Because the light's shining here, the shadow's going to appear on this side of the letter. Does that make sense? So, if I was going to make the light shine from here or from here, that would change where my drop shadow goes. Um... Can you pin the number so we can copy and paste? I did pin it, I believe. It should be pinned up there. Uh, how much is Painter's Clubhouse? It's $47 a month. Now, it's not opening until August 23rd. We've talked about it a lot today, but um, you won't be able to sign up until August 23rd, so just be sure and circle that on your calendar. Um, so the eraser is on the craft aisle, this little fancy fancy, not so fancy eraser is on the craft aisle at the Dollar Tree. Um, okay, did I get all the questions? I think so. Where can I find the cool paint brushes? Oh, I already answered that one. What is the font again? It's called Playlist Script. <laughs> Thank you, Leanne. It's good to see you. Um, Kathy says I need to play in Canva today. So, yeah, so if you're a Painters Clubhouse member, go back and watch the video I did last night. I showed how to upload your photo to Canva, how to choose your font, and how to like choose your color, how to see what it would look like with a different color drop shadow and all that. We did a little tutorial in Clubhouse last night showing all of that. Now, for those of you who are thinking about joining Painters Clubhouse on the 23rd, no worries. You'll have access to that video when you sign up too. You get access to all the stuff we have had in there since uh, 2018. So you get access to like a hundred or more videos. I need to come up with, I need to find out exactly how many because it's a lot. Oh, thank you. Debbie said Painters Clubhouse is worth every penny. Uh, Jackie Paint to Profit is another membership. It's where we teach you the business side of door hangers and it's only 20 more dollars a month and you get access to both Painters Clubhouse and Paint to Profit. Um, okay, Karen, uh, I will put the link to the place to get the brushes in the comments after we're done here, but I will see you guys again tomorrow. Don't forget to text me. Send me pictures of your projects. I love seeing those. Um, you can also ask me questions on there or whatever, but I will also text you tomorrow where I'm getting ready to go live so you won't miss it. All right, bye you guys.